is six for the AL's best record. And the Yankees, they are playing the Pirates right now. As the as we're recording this, they are tied 4-4. Come on, it's the Pirates, Yankees. Are you not going to beat the Pirates? And wow, Christian Javier, he, he had a no-hitter going into the fifth inning. And then he pitched five shutout innings. Um, Jeremy Pena did uh, hit a three-run homer, and there's just so much to talk about in this podcast. And by the way, Shane McClanahan, how's your ERA, ERA doing? We'll talk about this and more on this edition of Locked on Astros Podcast. Hello and welcome to Locked on Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked on Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked on Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Stros. Find the show at Locked on Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can you find you at? They can find me at H-Town Wheelhouse on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And they can find me at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive. Love winning these games. Always Stros. All righty, so thank you for making Locked on Astros podcast your first listen every day, whether it's on YouTube, keep on subscribing to us, keep on making us your first listen on Apple, IC, Spotify, wherever you listen to the podcast, check it, check us out. So I know on the thumbnail, I was kind of poking fun of the Astros beating up on Shane McClanahan. This is something that I kind of teased about on the um, I think three or four podcasts ago, or I just said, wouldn't it be nice if the Astros just go up there and put up a crooked number on Shane McClanahan, raise up his ERA a little bit and just kind of help a little bit with his ERA, uh, maybe in the Sayana race or something. Yeah, I know it's not going to be at the end of the day, um, a couple runs here or there is not going to be a big difference. I believed at the start of the game, he was like a uh, 2.17 ERA. At the end of the game, after the Astros scored five runs, he's now at 2.36 ERA. So it did infect his ERA a little bit. Dylan Cease is uh, pitching again uh, tonight. And at last I saw, he did give up one run. As uh, Let me see what he's doing right now. But um, this at this point in the season with the... Uh, yeah, it's only one run so far in the fourth inning. But at this point in the season... Every run counts if you're looking for Justin Verlander or Framer Valdez to get into that Zion race, especially with Dylan Cease. He's the guy that's kind of pitched the most innings because the other guys have kind of dealt with some injuries. And I guess um, Framer Valdez has pitched um, the more more innings than Justin Verlander. But the reason why I did that is the Astros took care of a guy that not a lot of teams have been able to handle this year. Shane right. McClanahan has have, has been a great pitcher. And so if you're looking at what's going on here, uh, they pitch, uh, he pitched four innings. He allowed five hits, five runs, four walks. I believe that ties a, a, a season high and three strikeouts allowed one home run to Jeremy Pena. So I know that he did leave with a um, injury. We later found out that it was a left neck stiffness or uh, something like that. So that that could affect the Scion race. But overall, the Astros did what it took to beat a tough left hander. Yeah, and I want to make the case for Framber here because Dylan Cease, I'm sitting here looking at the box score. He has pitched four innings, two hits, one earned run, only two strikeouts and three walks, Eric. And I tell you right now, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to make a bold statement because I was thinking about this tonight. I think the gap is closer between a Justin Verlander and Framber Valdez than it is Justin Verlander and Dylan Cease, if I'm being really honest. And I say that because of Framber's 25 consecutive quality starts, his consistency, his lack of blowing up on the mound, just what he's done, his body of work over this, I think, that where you and I had talked about, well, maybe Framber gets a couple second place, third place votes. Framber Valdez is not out of this Cy Young race. He is really, he's kind of like one of these thoroughbreds that is very strong 
in the in the pre-race talk, but no one really expects them to do much. And then when they get around that that final half turn of that final lap, that that you're like, okay, this horse is picking up steam. And it was it's it stinks that when a player goes out with an injury, we don't ever wish that on anybody, right. even our opponents. But it helps Justin Verlander. You were right. It also helps Framber Valdez too. And once again, Eric, we have a situation where we've got Justin Verlander and another Astros pitcher in this Cy Young talk. I really hope we sign this guy. I really hope we keep it another two years because imagine if he continues to do what he's doing, he could be in the Cy Young talk again next year. All right. So I don't know if y'all can see this, but the Pirates are batting right now with runners at first and uh, third with one out. And this is in the eighth inning and they just scored. They just scored. So, um, now let's see if they can hold on to the lead against the uh, the Yankees, and if they do, that will drop the Astros' magic number to five for that um, the overall best record in the American League, and that's something that the Astros are fighting for. And I know a lot of people are like, "Wow, the Astros actually trotted out a lot of their regulars a day after the celebration. Isn't that the day that you?" trot out your Hunover lineup where you just have a lot of your rookies <laughs> playing. But uh, Dusty Baker um, put m- most of his core guys out there. And he or Alvarez, a lot of people were like, well, was Alvarez really hurt? I know that uh, Baker removed him um, late in the game yesterday. Uh, but he said, and then he's not in the lineup today. But I think the plan was if they didn't clinch yesterday, this is what Baker said, then he was going to be in the lineup today as a DH. But since they clinched yesterday, they went ahead and sat him down uh, just to kind of let his um, make sure everything's okay. But they they said nothing's wrong with his knee. Everything's fine. But uh, basically what you're going to see over the next week or so is the Astros resting a lot of their main guys. And I think that, uh, let me see, you're going to see uh, Alex Bregman get a day off on Wednesday. Altuve is going to get the day off on Thursday. And then Kyle Tucker is going to get the day off on Friday. That's how Dusty Baker has kind of aligned it out where they're still going for the best record. So they're not going to sit the entire team, but uh, they're definitely going to give some of their key guys some time off. Exactly. And something I wanted to share, and I know I shared one of his tweets last night, but again, Daniel hit a home run with this because he talked about Dusty Baker when he talked about Hector Neres. And he said, Hector Neres is not available to the bullpen today. The team is saying he is day-to-day with dehydration, stomach discomfort, and headaches. He goes, the team says it is expected to pass with time. And then he put Advil in a breakfast beer. And then his final tweet from a few hours ago, never have I gotten so many suggestions for for hangover remedies in one tweet. (laughs) But I want to talk about Hector Neres. I was there Sunday. And you know how they have the kids steal the bases, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, the day before, which was Saturday, they had a girl that had cerebral palsy steal the base, and they had the whole section have signs with her name. Go, I think her name was Mary. I, I forget her name off the top of my head. Yeah. And that was a really cool thing. And then Sunday, they had Hector Neri's son go steal the base. And Hector Neri's and um, and Javier Bracamonte were there cheering him on. And it was just it was just a cool moment. I really love Hector Neri's. I just thought that was a funny tweet. And, you know, look, they had fun. They celebrated it, and they were celebrating for the guys. You know, it's their first time, right? And we all knew it's, yes, this is business as usual. It means something, but it's not the end goal. And, you know, coming into this series, Eric, I honestly thought the Rays were going to put up a fight, and they haven't really put up a fight. Yeah, and going back to the Neris um, statement, um, Dusty Baker said on Sports Talk 790 today that he gave Hector Neris the lineup card after a game, specifically for the reason that he's never been in playoffs. And he also said that Hunter Brown could have pitched to four innings, but he wanted to give Neris the chance to pitch in a clinching spot for the first time. And that's why I suggested in, in last night's podcast. So uh, once again, Eric Heisman is right. Eric, the man, that's why he's the man. So, anyway. Wow. Um, <laughs> hey, dude. <laughs> I'm look, just kidding. <laughs> guy, look, guy, I have been, I have been telling Eric he needs to get hats. Look, Eric's not a hat guy. I'm a hat guy. Um, well, Eric, you know. My look, father-in-law right gave ahead. me this. He found this in um, his. Oh, nice. He's moving. This is like a 1962 vintage hat. So, 1962. Wait, is that the open star? 
What is that? I don't know, but it looks like a, it looks like the, um, no, I don't know. Oh, this, no, this, that's, I don't think that's this from the, no. Okay. That's from the red brick era. Yeah. That's why I but thought. But it said 1962 is when they started. Yeah. Right. That's the that's open. That's what I thought it was. Yes. That was the, let's never do pinstripes again, uniforms, please. Thank you very much. Right. <laughs> so I can put that on. I'm just not. A there you go. Yeah. He, hey, hey man, the yin and the yang, bro. We can't both be hat guys, but right. see you rock the curved comfortable cap i rock the flat bill and hey truth be known i used to hate flat bill hats i was like oh, i hate flat bill that's for yeah, the I don't kids. Like flat i'm bill. like i freaking love them bro like what's up well you know what some people um have problem rocking it in certain times so let's talk about uh what you can have if you need to rock it at a certain location <laughs> well here's the deal summer's winding down the nights are getting hotter but the breeze isn't the only thing that's getting stiff. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, we all know that confidence can take you a long ways in life. That's especially true um, in the place where you sleep, especially when it's time to step up to the plate. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. The process is simple. Sign up at Blue Chew. Dot com consult with one of our licensed medical providers and once you're approved you'll receive your prescription within days the best part it's all done online so no visits to the doctor's office no awkward conversations and no waiting in line at the pharmacy with blue chew men everywhere are excited to see the postman because when your package has arrived your package has arrived they say there's nothing more appealing than confidence and the blue chew can help you have the confidence when it counts so we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code Locked On at checkout. Just pay five dollars shipping. That's BlueChew.com promo code Locked On to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. All right, I've just realized something. You know what? I feel like Forrest Gump in this hat. It kind of looks like the Forrest Gump pant. No, no, don't bring back the Forrest Gump, please. Hey, the Pirates are up eight to four. They hit a, they hit a, was that a grand slam? Hold uh, no, on. Does, no, they, they scored a run before. So. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Well, oh, but still it's eight to four. Remember, you heard it first on Locked on Astros. I said, this is a trap series. The Pirates have been beating up on the big boys. I'm glad we don't play the Pirates at the end of the season. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, f stupid is as stupid does, and that's what the Yankees are right now, trying uh, losing a lot of games. That's what my mama always said. Mama always <laughs> said, life's like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. Oh, my God. You, <laughs> you're right. the mix of two different voices, and I'll tell you off the air who you remind me of. I love it, though. Um, no, Jay, we're not even going to go there. So, yeah, so I called it. This is a trap series for the Yankees. Aaron Judge is chasing number 60. He's 0 for 3 as we speak. And, you know, hey, you know what? Look, what Aaron Judge is doing right now is simply amazing. I know this is a Nationals podcast, but if he doesn't win the MVP this year, Eric, even over Shohei Otani, I mean, he's 20, 30 points higher than just about everybody and everything. He's got a 10 war. Only two other players have done that, Mookie Betts and Mike Trout. Look, I'm just telling you, you know why I'm giving Aaron Judge credit, Eric? Do you know why? Ask me why. Say, why? say Brett. Why am I giving him credit? Because he's not going to do anything in the playoffs. This is a this is a regular season trophy, and the Yankees may not even make it to the ALCS. I, I, I'm telling you right now, the Mariners and the Guardians stand in the way of the Yankees, and 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 unless the Yankees become the Yankees that they're supposed to be, they may not make it out of the ALDS round. Okay, all right. Uh, can we move on from Aaron Judge? To, uh, do I have your permission? Dude, okay. I'm just hey. Moving you know, on, <laughs> these these schmucks got to get some love from somewhere, you know. I mean, come on, yeah. I'm joking. It's all good. All right, so Christian Javier uh, looked really good for four innings. He uh, once again uh, no hit innings, um, but then once once again it seems like the Astros uh, throw pretty good. Then the fifth inning, it seems like he either ran out of steam a little bit, he gave up the first hit, then maybe lost his concentration a little bit, but. To his credit, he was able to get out of it with uh, not allowing any runs. So he did allow four walks, had six strikeouts, 
only one hit allowed. His ERA on the season is 2.77, five hits. So th- he's got his 10th win on the season. So he's 10 and nine. And so I think that if you're looking at Hunter Brown for the Astros bullpen in the playoffs, I think Christian Javier, the way he's been pitching, I think that there's a, there's a, um, I know what Jose Arquiti has done in the playoffs, but just what can Christian Javier do for you in the playoffs as a fourth game pitcher? I mean, it's very intriguing, especially in ALDS. Maybe once you go to the ALCS, maybe you need a fifth starter. That's when Arquiti can come into the situation. But, and I know, and I'm contradicting myself because I think that Javier is the guy that can come out of the bullpen. But at the same time, I just think that this guy is, when he's on, he could be one of the most dominated pitching pitchers in the game. I agree. And, you know, our buddy, um, Mr. Mr. Campa is following us again from, from, from Tampa. And I believe he's, he's one of our listeners that actually met, he was in town. So thank you for continuing to support us, Eric, Christian Javier. I mean, I really think when we look at the ALDS that Luis Garcia or Jose Arquiti are the odd men out. But my question is this, Eric, everybody's down on Will Smith. And I don't, I don't understand that because he hasn't been bad. He hasn't been terrible. He hasn't allowed any runs. Is he the odd man out in the ALDS and they keep Orkiti and they keep Luis Garcia on? And, it, you know, I mean, I mean, like, that's why we need it, to go over it rotation depends. and who's going to be on. It depends just, on who they face. They may true. need a left-handed pitcher because if they have a – I know that Maton is great against left-handed hitters, but if they face a mostly left-handed lineup – uh, you like the uh, I think the Rays have a lot of left handers. I mean, I, I don't know if you need a, a left handed pitcher. Will Smith is on there and he's been I know he's had a couple down games, but for the most part, he's been very reliable recently. So and what he did in playoffs against the Astros last year, don't discount him. Maton, well, right. well, he's been garbage a lot but just remember what he's done in playoffs and uh, i love that picture that the astros put up of him today they're like um playoff maton is here and that's what he is like he has the dexter face um he has the dexter morgan like i'm gonna just go out there and take care of business because that's just how he is he's just a guy that's just in the playoffs he's a whole different pitcher he is, and that's the thing I like about this team is, honestly, Eric, whoever they go with, I trust who their pick is because this team has a sustained success record. We are where we are because of our scouting, because of our player development, because of our pitching development. Even when Strom left and everybody said the wheels were going to fall off, it's like we got better. So there is a lot that goes into this, and you can bet that no matter what is going to happen or who ends up on these different rosters for these playoff series, that like you said, they're going to pay attention to matchups. They're going to pay attention to who's playing, how they're feeling, how they're going, and go from there. Hunter Brown, I do think, at least makes ALCS and World Series. I think he's a taxi squad guy in the ALDS, and a lot of people don't want to hear that. But you may not even need a fourth starter, Eric. You may not even need Javier to start in a fourth game. You may be able to go in and win the first three games to where Javier, if let's say you're you're up two nothing and in and you're up in the third game, right? You're up a few okay. runs, throw Christian Javier in there, and then boom, seal the deal, and then you move on. I'm just saying, there's so many different possibilities, Eric. And I don't think any of us really knows exactly who's going and who's not. But I know who the bubble guys are. I just don't know where in the bubble they're going to be, just on the inside, just on the outside. But how great was it for Jeremy Pena to hit a three-run bomb? How great is it in his last – and look, I think his last 20 games, he's hitting like like around 260. He's got a few home runs. But he's not swinging as much on these off-speed pitches. He'll still go for the slider here or there. But he's a little bit more disciplined. And when he hits, he's hitting for power. He's getting on base, and he's bringing runners in. Right. That is key, Eric, because we don't have a Carlos Correa. We don't have Clutch Correa. We don't have a George Springer. We don't have those guys. But we've got guys who in the moment, in the right time, can raise their game to that level. And I really think that great things are coming for us in the postseason. 
All right. So if you look at Jeremy Pinney in the last seven games, that's not including today's game, but he's um, he's batting 185 with two home runs. The last 15 games, he's batting 258 with three home runs. There you go. And the last uh, 30 games, he's batting 244 with four home runs and 12 RBIs. But yes, ever since the Astros have moved him to that two hole, he seems to be doing a lot better. And the Astros seem to find a way to win when he's batting second. I don't know if it's just um, the team, uh, maybe it's just moving the rest of the lineup back, Yuli hitting uh, deeper in the lineup, or just the Astros, maybe it's just random luck that the Astros just seem to win when he plays there. So, but yeah, it was good to see him doing better. Uh, but also the fact that uh, Kyle Tucker is the first Houston Astros outfielder to reach 100 RBIs since Carlos Lee did it back in what? It was 2009, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Let me, yeah. So that was just awesome. The fact that he did it. So Carlos Lee did it in uh, back in 2009. So uh, we talked about this in yesterday's show. So no outfielder for the Houston Astros have done it. So this is great. He had an RBI double uh, scoring Ho- Jose Altuve. Um, and it was just awesome to see that. And you could tell that he was excited about that. And also Yiner Diaz, Diaz, Played in a game. He got some playing time <laughs> and he actually got his first major league hit, which was a double off the wall in center field. And wow. then maybe another ballpark with a little bit of wind that may have gone out. Well, and this takes me back to watching him play several games at Constellation Field this year. Always impressive, whether he was in the field, behind the dish, or at the plate. Always impressive. He's a great, lively kid when he hits a tank. I mean, the team, he's he's got this, he's got this ability to draw people in. And he is he is gaining a lot of knowledge. And I know a lot of people think the Astros hate him. I know a lot of people think that he's just one of those guys that is going to be left out. But I will say this that if you feel left out because you don't have tickets to the Astros game, why don't you head on down to Hooters of NASA? That's right. Call your buddies, call some friends. Hey, maybe Eric and I will be there watching the Astros, cheering them on when they're on the road or even at home and we're not going to the game. We love going to Hooters of NASA. They got TVs everywhere. You can watch whatever sport you'd like. You don't have to watch the Astros, but they pipe the sound through the speakers. They got UFC nights. They've got Thursdays. They've got drink specials three to six daily. On, I mean, also, if you mention Locked on Astros, you'll get a free basket of fried pickles. That's right. They have the world famous Hooters girls. Now, I would suggest to you that you go there and try Eric's favorite. He loves the Three Mile Island sauce with, um, you, you know, tenders, and he likes curly fries. There's there's a whole slew of different flavors. I like the honey chipotle, and I get the fries, or the tots are actually really good. And something I've tried new there are the grilled fish tacos. Phenomenal. You would love those. The world-famous Hooter Girls, they do a phenomenal job getting you the drinks you want, the food you want, it's fast, it's hot, it's good. I mean, the desserts are amazing too. The atmosphere is great. They've got Hooterades, they've got legendary Ritas, so many things to be thankful for when you go to Hooters of NASA. So that's what I want you to do. Join us one day, I-45 South, exit 528, for great wings and the best service from the world-famous Hooters girls. It's 20796 Gulf Freeway in Webster, Texas, just south of the Baybrook Mall. Tell them Locked on Astros sent you. All right. Tuesday's win was the actually the Astros 17th shutout of the season. This was the most since they did night that 19 shutouts back in 1986. Think about that generation. That was a different era of baseball. Uh, and you, they played in the Astrodome. There's uh, not a lot of home runs. So that was a whole different ball game. So think about the Astros pitching and how good it's been to have 17 shutouts with what 13 games to go that's impressive brett that is huge and you're right that was a pitcher's ballpark i grew up watching games in that my my first game i was two i actually remember going into the stadium to my first game i don't remember the game but i remember being there and seeing the dome And I remember seeing Jose Cruz take the ball deep, Kevin Bass, Jeff Bagwell as a rookie. I I remember seeing these monstrous home runs. I remember Sean Barry hit one, Eric, that just nearly took the cover off the dome. Had it not been for the speaker, it would have probably gone out of the stadium. 
But you're right. To see us do things in Minute Maid Park or in today's ballparks compared to the cavernous ballparks back then, it really speaks a lot. Can you imagine if they had the home field advantage as pitchers in the Astrodome? It might go a lot different too, because I think, you know what? I think Jordan Alvarez would hit a lot of home runs, but I think Kyle Tucker and some of these guys would get a lot of like doubles and triples because they would just hit the deepest part of the fence, even it, because they hit lasers. You know, Mancini would be rocking that, that gapper to right center or left center. And so at the end of the day, to see what this pitching staff has done from beginning to end and consistently, Eric, there hasn't been a single hiccup. Maybe we had some rough times with the bullpen. Okay. But what they're doing is phenomenal. Uh, there was almost a little hiccup today. We almost had a Mitch Wild Thane Williams moment today where Brian Abreu, his velocity was down a little bit. It was down on the slider. He was down 2.8 miles per hour from his yearly average, and he was down 1.9 miles per hour from his four-seamer today. And he just looked a little wild. Overall, he faced four batters, only got one out, left with the bases loaded, and Ryan Presley had to come in to save the day. And based on Ryan Presley coming in and just getting the last two outs, he was able to secure the shutout. So this wasn't a pretty one. This was one mm -hmm. that could have ended uh, like they could have scored a run. But Brian Abreu has been nails pretty much all year, but he just looked a little bit off today. The velocity was down. A lot of people were joking around. Maybe he he was he had a little bit too much to uh, drink last night. I mean, yeah. you can say that could happen, but uh, let's see what happens in his next uh, start and see what happens there. Well, I think this is huge too because Ryan Presley, you know, he had that 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 neck stiffness and he was dealing with that, and he's back and he's he's really been nails ever since. And Jay brings that up. It was it, it was great to see. Um, here's here's the thing with 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 Brian Abreu is he has been excellent all year and he the thing is he didn't give up any runs but my question is this I thought for a save you had to be up only by three runs did he get the save because bases were loaded yeah and they had a potential to get within two or three so that's how it qualified for the save yeah if because the runners I, on base uh so if the runners okay. are on base and in, in order to get to a save situation so yes okay okay and and i'm asking that because i don't think everybody knows that or understands that i know there are so many nuances of baseball that i feel like every day i learn something new so i wanted to clarify that for our listeners um, as well. That Mike Scott, no hitter. That's awesome. I wish I was there. I was at soccer practice. Yeah, I actually played soccer. I mean, kickball one time. Um, and I was not happy because I was supposed to be at that game, but I had to go to practice because we were dedicated to team back then. Um, how I have the foresight now and wish I would have not done that. But the bottom line is this. The Houston Astros made a statement today, a shutout after a shutout. They let the league know, we're here, boys. We're not done. Like, we won the division. We didn't slough back. We didn't just whatever. Like, we went out and we pressed and we played. And we are the best team in the American League, period. Right. And to add up on to my definition, uh, Jay Roberts brings out the fact that the tying run was on deck. That's another reason why. So, yeah, it, it's just a fact on um, how many runners were on base and just the situation. And so if your closer has to come in and it doesn't even have to be a closer, just whoever it is. So if it's your closer that comes in and puts you in that situation, let's say Presley came in and put the, you in that situation and Abreu had to come in, then he could get the save in that situation. So it just depends on that. So, uh, yeah, so that was great. Um, can you uh, guess which Astros players have 100 RBIs? Which Astros players this year have 100 no. RBIs? Uh, in history of the franchise, there's 18 players. Well, I'm not going to guess all 18. Jeff Bagwell. Jeff Bagwell. Glenn, um, Glenn, Glenn Davis. Glenn Davis, yeah. Um, Joe Morgan. Uh, um, Joe Morgan no. uh, did not know. Okay. Jose Cruz. Jose Cruz uh, did not. Carlos Lee. Carlos Lee, yes. Duh. Chris, Car Chris Carter? <laughs> <laughs> I don't Chris know. Carter. I'm, I'm joking, uh, okay. kind of. <laughs> uh, so it's Alex Bregman uh, did it twice. Yuli Gurriel once. Alvarez once. 
Then you have Lance Berkman, Jeff Bagwell, oh, Moises Jimmy Wynn. Alou. Jimmy Wynn is one. Uh, Richard Hidalgo, Derek Bell, Bob Watson, Carl Everett. Who who remembers Carl Everett? Dude, like Carl Kent. Everett was awesome. I know. That dude had anger issues. <laughs> yeah. Jeff Kent um, falling off his bike while washing it. Or it was his truck. I forget. No, Moise, no, Moises Alou. No, Moises Alou had 100 RBIs. Moises Alou tore his ACL on the treadmill. I don't know about Jeff. No, Kent that's right. Falling. No, Jeff Kent was washing his truck or something, okay. and that's how he hurt himself. Uh, Jim know. Wynn, and then Lee May, Cesar Cesarino, Glenn Davis, and Morgan Innsberg. Yes. Oh, so, oh, okay. Very good. Yeah, dude, Morgan Innsberg, man. When that dude was on, bro, he was on. Unbelievable. What about Richard Hidalgo? Did you say him? Yeah. Doggy, yeah, I did say him. Someone said Adam Everett. No. <laughs> No, Adam Everett. No, if if Adam Everett hit a hundred hundred RBIs, he would be the MVP. <laughs> just, just just to show you the history of Astros at shortstop before Carlos Correa, Adam Everett was the best shortstop the Astros had. Hey. I mean, Dickie Thon would have been probably the best, but um, but Adam, we know what happened there. Good, Adam Everett. I think still to this day is the best defensive defensive shortstop right. of all time in Astros history. Even better than Carlos Correa over his career, Adam <laughs> Everett. <laughs> yes, and he wasn't there for his bat. He was clearly there for his glove. He was an amazing shortstop. If you could take the bat of one of these players and put it in Adam Everett's body, Adam Everett would have been an MVP candidate. Adam Everett would have been a gold goal. I mean, he would have been a silver slugger, but he was fun to watch. He was a quality player. He was one of the good guys in the clubhouse. And even in those losing teams, and Morgan Innsberg was simply great. He was astounding. 04 and 05, Morgan Innsberg was a guy. He was a dude. And, you know, there's something fun about those teams, even though they didn't win the ultimate goal. Um, I miss some of those players, the Oswalts, the Berkmans, and all those guys. Yes. Yeah, so um, somebody asked us who's pitching tomorrow. Um, the next guy up for a shutout is Lance McCullers Jr., who's 3-1 with a 2.34 ERA, facing Corey Kluber, who's 10-9 with a 4.44 ERA. So the Rays have thrown out their two best pitchers. Now the Astros um, – throw out one of their better pitchers. So I think this is going to be another favorable matchup for the Houston Astros. And this is going to be another early game. So I don't know what's up with all the 540 starts. This is just kind of weird. I mean, I like it because we get to do early podcasts, but it's just kind of weird having all these early games. But um, I think that this is a good matchup. This is a good way to say, hey, we're facing a playoff team and we're dominating them. And so this is a good message to send not only to the Rays, but to all the other wildcard teams to say, hey, it's not that we we're just beating the AL West. We're beating other teams. We're beating good teams, playoff teams. Yeah. So watch out. And like we've said, win or lose, whether it's on the road. Hold on. I mean, I mean not win or lose. on At home or on the road, the Astros are strong either way. Yeah, so you're going with the, the comments. I saw yes. you there. <laughs> so home field advantage or not, it doesn't matter. I think they still get home field advantage easily with the AL, with the World Series. It doesn't matter to me because this team is just as good on the road as they are at home. And this is a solid lineup. And that's all I got for tonight. What a game. Yeah, so um, update on Dylan Cease. He's pitched uh, five and two-thirds innings, only allowed one earned run, four hits, three strikeouts, three walks. So his ERA is three, uh, 214 at the moment. So um, I think uh, Verlander's at, what, 213? So I think that at this point, it's going to be neck and neck with Cease and Verlander, probably, for the Cy Young. I think Shane McClanahan, especially if this is a long term, I mean, even short term injury where he's going to be out, that could hurt his chances. But that kid is uh, pretty good, uh, but he didn't pitch good tonight. So the Astros took care of business against a playoff caliber pitcher. And I'm, I'm really proud of the Astros. You have Jeremy Pena coming out and getting the job done and just the lineup as a whole getting the job done. Yiner Diaz, welcome to the hit club. And I love seeing the whole 
dugout being like, get the ball, get the ball. And so that was good to see. So everybody understands the situation. So guys, make sure you go ahead and tune in to us every day. We do the show every day, not just after a win, uh, after losses, tough losses. And we'll be doing this after every playoff game as well. Even during off season, we'll be, we're, we'll be talking about past seasons and we'll probably do an episode just on outfielders or guys that hit hundred RBIs or something just for fun of it. So uh, guys, make sure you tune in to us on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to us. Make sure you make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey and Spotify. And hopefully we'll be talking tomorrow about another sweep, but the Astros just keep on doing what they do and they keep on winning series. And that's all you can do at, in your quest for 107 wins. And all the Astros need to do is go nine and four the rest of the way. So that's all we got for this edition of the Locked on Astros podcast. My name is Eric Eisman. He is Brett H. Town Wheelhouse, and we are the Locked on Astros podcast. Go Astros.